Here is my honest opinion on Ubuntu Linux. This Linux distro, whilst very nice in terms of look and feel, is unfortunately a failed attempt to get Windows users to switch to Linux, and if you dig a little deeper, you will see why that is. Ubuntu is a Windows themed Linux distribution that aims to provide Windows users a free and open source alternative to Microsoft Windows, however, this distro is actually not free, they secretly keep some extra features behind a paywall of $35, and to get the extra features, you have to buy a license through PayPal, and that license costs $35, for lots of these would be the equivalent to $140 give or take five dollars, and this makes this distro seem like a scam, and if you think this distro is a scam, you are certainly not be wrong. Ubuntu comes in three different editions, all of which have extra features locked behind that thirty-five dollar paywall. The first and most notable edition is Windows 11 Ubuntu Plasma, this edition uses the KDE desktop environment as its user interface, and it has been heavily modified to match the look and feel of Windows 11, the efforts to mimic Windows in Ubuntu are fantastic, and the team have done a great job of mimicking Windows 11 and Windows 10, however, they don't look 100% like the real thing, and some things such as the control panel are locked behind that paywall, however, as demonstrated by Michael MJD. I will leave a link to his video on Ubuntu in the description below for anyone who wants to see his review on it, it seems like the free editions of Ubuntu are no more feature packed than the ones who have already purchased and registered a Power Tools professional license key, so if that's the case, why waste $35 that you don't need to be spending, Ubuntu free editions don't seem to be locked down or limited in any way shape or form, however. The Ubuntu team specifically states that if you want extra features, more customizations, and newer professional versions of their operating system, you ain't got no choice other than to pay that $35, I mean, I understand that software costs money to make, but charging people for free software is a form of armed robbery, and it should be legal because it's not right or justified to charge people $35 to grant them access to things which should already be provided for free inside the operating system, it's just that these developers went too far and decided to lock specific features and functions behind a paywall of $35, and if you had to set up many computers running Ubuntu, imagine how expensive that license bill is going to rack up, you will be paying more for every device you want to unlock those professional features on. So, while I think Ubuntu looks really nice, and does a great job of imitating the look and feel of Windows, it sadly has many things which makes it one of my least favorite Linux distributions in existence, the fact that you have to pay almost 40 bucks just to unlock things that should already be provided to you for free really blows me away. I don't like it when companies distribute free software for a fee, this is like armed robbery, it should be a crime and it should have legal consequences for those who engage in it, I am not saying I want to see the Ubuntu team go under, but they should not be violating free and open source rules, such as the rule that you are not allowed, I repeat, you are not allowed to distribute free software for a price under any circumstances whatsoever, however requiring donations, or simply asking for them, is allowed to be done by the software's respective developer. What Ubuntu team have done has created a lot of anger in the Linux community, and rightly so, you should not be charging people to use a free and open source system, and there are several trademark issues which could land the Ubuntu team in a legal battle with Microsoft and Canonical. Firstly, Canonical specifically states that their Ubuntu or even just the word, Buntu, is a registered trademark of Canonical, and anyone who wants to use the words Ubuntu or Buntu must ask for Canonical's explicit permission to use that registered trademark, and what is Microsoft Windows, a registered trademark, so the Ubuntu team have got themselves into some hot water, Microsoft and Canonical can take legal action against the Ubuntu team, if they see it as being necessary. The Windows logo and wallpapers are also registered trademarks that are owned by Microsoft, 
So somebody using two things that are registered trademarks, without notifying the respective companies that they are using their registered trademarks, is a surefire way to get yourself into a legal battle with any big name corporation, as trademarks are copyright protected by copyright and infringement laws, these laws vary by jurisdiction and country, but they all share the same emphasis, you cannot use or distribute somebody else's trademark or logo without asking for their permission to use it first. Wubuntu has violated several copyright infringement rules that may see them getting into a court case with Microsoft, and potentially the canonical group as well. Wubuntu includes Microsoft Edge and Copilot, both of these are strictly controlled and offered by Microsoft, so once again, the inclusion of such things could land the Wubuntu team a hefty legal bill, or worse yet total bankruptcy because the court ruled in favor of Microsoft and Canonical, and if there was a court case where Microsoft and Canonical were fighting the Wubuntu team, chances are, Microsoft and Canonical have the judge on their side, and that means that the judge can throw as many charges and penalties as they want at the Wubuntu team, so if you have learnt something from Wubuntu, it's that you should not use somebody else's trademarks or logos without their explicit permission, otherwise it's breaking the law, and this means you could face serious legal consequences for doing such things, even though a logo or trademark is not a tangible item that actually has any material existence, if a company deems the logo and trademark as their own, then you cannot do anything to change that and the Wubuntu team should seriously be more careful about doing things like stealing the Microsoft Windows trademark and the Ubuntu name trademark, as these alone can land the team in a hole so deep they will not be able to get out of it, and who wants to be in that situation, nobody does, so Wubuntu, for many reasons, is far from my list of recommended Linux distributions primarily due to the fact that it costs almost $40 just to unlock what you should already have in the operating system, that's the main reason I dislike this distro, but I also worry about the Ubuntu team going to court and facing multiple legal battles, this would damage their reputation and ruin their chances of getting people to use their operating system, but when you charge people to use your free and open source kernel, and then on top of that, use registered trademarks and logos from powerful corporations that can easily end you just like that, do you not think for one second that this is a sure as hell way to damage your reputation and make it so that people will think your Linux distro is a scam, everyone is calling Wubuntu a scam, or at least some popular YouTubers are calling it a scam, many are pissed off that the Wubuntu team even has a professional license key that users are encouraged to purchase if they want to unlock their system to the fullest, and I totally understand the problem with that, in fact, I hate it when a software company advertises their software as free, but then secretly somehow makes you pay for it, you either pay using a credit or debit card, or through PayPal, or they can make donations mandatory so you must pay them in order to use their system, elementary OS forces you to pay a donation fee before you can download the operating system, which ruins the free and open source aspect of Linux, and when I say free, I am talking about free, free as in free of cost, but what's worse is that Wubuntu includes software that is not an official replacement for its proprietary counterparts, for example, only Office can be a great replacement for Microsoft Office, if you do not rely on Microsoft Office specific features, functions, and all the rest of it, but Wubuntu advertises itself as being a Windows alternative, and yet does not include the software that Windows comes pre-installed with, how ironic is that? This Linux distro is really a miserable failure to get Windows users to migrate to Linux. The developers hope that somebody will be gullible enough to fall into their trap, and once you have the fish in the net, that's it, there is no escaping or getting out, you're stuck with this Linux distro because you paid $35 for some basic features that should already be provided to you for free in the operating system, and it is not your fault you have to spend $35 just to grant yourself some extra fancy features and all the rest of it. It is the fault of the developers for not distributing their OS entirely free of cost, 
This is why we say most Linux distros are free to use, because some, such as Zorin OS, Elementary OS, and most recently, Wubuntu Linux, charge you a fee to download and use the professional editions of their operating systems, which is armed robbery in the Linux world, where free and open source is supposed to be the norm, and distros like Wubuntu make Linux Mint and other popular distros look bad, because Linux Mint also imitates the look and feel of Windows, and it might get people saying, oh, Linux Mint is a scam too, those developers are using Microsoft's trademarks as well. But Linux Mint is not using official Microsoft trademarks, and it is not a scam by any means whatsoever, it is free to use, the developers encourage but do not enforce donations or voluntary payments, and their software is not a scam. The Wubuntu Linux distro on the other hand, uses deception and enticing language to catch you and trick you into thinking that this operating system can replace Microsoft Windows, when it cannot do anything of the sort, even with the inclusion of Wine, which is a compatibility layer to run Windows software in Linux. Not all Windows programs will work under such layers, and you might run into latency and other issues, depending on the Windows software you want to use, and, Paying for a tool that you will likely never use is an absolute joke, even though the Wubuntu team states some specific features you unlock, it does not seem like the free editions of Wubuntu are limited or impacted by not having the professional license key, so I strongly recommend you do not pay for the power tools key that Wubuntu recommends you pay for, because it will do nothing more than leave you $35 less in your bank account. Do you really need to spend $35 on a non-existent item which is not tangible? Absolutely not, and if anyone watching this video wants to try Wubuntu, I strongly advise you stick to the free editions of Wubuntu, especially if you are planning on installing Wubuntu on a PC or laptop, do not waste $35 on something that's not necessary, you do not need those power tools and the amount of stuff you get for that $35 is not enough to justify paying for it, even once. Anyway, what are your opinions on this Linux distro, is it a pure scam and an attempt to get Windows users over to Linux, or does this distro stand a chance against the big boys like Linux Mint, please let us all know what you think down in the comments section below. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you next video. Bye for now.